Hello, I'm Bentham, and today we're playing Kerbal Space Program, and in this particular episode we're going to work on a space station. So let's go into the vehicle assembly building and see what to what we should do. So we have we want it probe driven, that's the the plan that I have here. So what we will do is we will get the Probodobodyne Octo. I love the names in this. Okay, we'll zoom in a bit because it's quite small. And what we want to have on the space station is a lab. We also want... Uh, let's see, do we have them? Yes, we have a, we have a, a hitchhiker storage container. We want one of, the, one of those as well. So it's going to be a manned sort of science lab station. So we'll, what we will do... We'll, we'll put some science equipment on it for a start, I think. Well, actually, no, no. We'll, we'll start with a little bit of steering, things like that. We'll put some SAS on. And actually, what sort of structural parts do we have, just to make it look a bit neater, maybe? Could do... try and... Hmm. I think we could just... Oh, it, how do I rotate? So was the, there we go. I, I was pressing F for all... I, I had my hand in the wrong place on the, on the keyboard. That looks alright, I suppose. I say, you know what? No, 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 no. We're going to change this. The, the the probe body is going to be on the bottom of the craft, out of the way, because it's an awkward shape and I don't like it. So we're going to put the science lab on top, and then we're going to get the hitchhiker storage. Where's it gone? There, the hitchhiker storage container on top of that, and then all the interesting stuff will happen up here on the top. So we'll we'll have the science equipment here. We'll put a one of the the materials labs and then we'll put some goo containers we'll put two on just because symmetry and we've got thermometers at the moment that's it for interesting sciencey stuff unfortunately but we'll just have to deal with that and then we can get some transmission things here what, what, what should we do with this we can we'll put four on the site no no before on the on there and then we'll get these other ones that are cool and we can put them oh not that, like this way around on here um and then that, that's it for science equipment so now we will put put the SAS on but what we also want is some RCS and we'll put that under it because I like it that way around oh I know what we need we need um power generation at the moment we only have these solar panels, so we'll, they'll have to do. We'll just try and get a nice pattern with them. So we can do it like that. And then there, there, there. And then we'll carry on down onto this science lab section because science takes lots of energy. So like that, like that, and like that. There we go, that's lots of power generation. We need a little bit of power storage. So we will we'll go down to two times and then we'll just stick these. We'll make it all look nice. And then we might put some of is there anywhere we can No, that doesn't look right, does it? We need them to be twice as wide. Okay, geese have just gone to war outside my room. You may have heard that. They've, they've been amassing a bit this morning, and I think they just began their their wars. Anyway, um, let's see, what other RCS stuff? We have these um, RCS tanks. We might put these on instead, because they're a bit more neat. Hang on, I, I need to count nine things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. We can put four of these on, and that looks quite nice. And then maybe we'll put some on there. That looks a little bit odd, but whatever. It's my space station, you can't stop me. Um, let's see. Of course, we need something that uses the RCS, so we'll put... Actually, let's, let's move these to here. It matches a little bit better. Let's see, the RCS can go here. And that should work fine. Actually, that's a place where we can put some more batteries that's out of the way and doesn't look silly. Uh, oh, there we go. Four of those. 
Do we need lights? We should stick some on just in case. Um, we don't want too many because it can get kind of ridiculously bright. Let's just have two mounted on the windows because why not? And of course we need the docking port because at the end of the day this is a space station. We've got a, the nice one with the with the cover on it. Um, we could put some ladders on, but that that's just effort. So that's all done. Don't need aer any aerodynamic parts. Structural stuff looks all fine. We don't particularly need any of those things. We've got that. We're not going to have fuel on this particular section. So there we go. We've got the, the core of a space station there. And um, I think while we're launching, I'll talk about it a little bit more. What we want to do at the moment is launch it. So this is going to be big. So we're going to go for the 2 meter parts. I mean we're already using 2 meter parts on the station itself. But we're now going to use 2 meter parts for the launch. I wish the geese would shut up. Whether you can hear them or not, they really are annoying. Okay, we're going to want to put struts on that because it's not a very big connection between... In fact, it's floating. That's hovering. So yeah, we that's it's a good connection to have there. Right, so what's what stuff do we have? We have these. Excellent. Put a bunch of these on. We can... Oh, did that wrong. Alt. That. Actually, no, no, no. Because we don't have the, the biggest of the two meter engines right now. We want, to, we want to have a decent amount of thrust to us. So what we will then do... Oh, let's go around the side. We'll just have two things here. And then the way we'll do it is we'll have twice as many fuel tanks. And that should be fairly balanced, I think, for thrust. And then we want to connect these up to the middle engine. And get some struts. Connect those up there. And these up here. And let's not stick stuff directly onto the station that we, that we don't need. It should be fine, I think. Okay. And then we want... Oh. Come on, click it. There we go. Okay, we want these on here, and we're going to get these new boosters. Look at these things. This is proper NASA stuff. We're going to have to lift them up a bit. Put them there. There we go. These things are huge. <laughs> They're as tall as the thing we're firing here. Okay. This... They're going to have a bit of thrust to them, so I think I'll I'll strut them to... Ooh. Okay, the struts don't seem to... They seem to clip inside it slightly. It is a, it, the, it's a part that's been introduced in this most recent update, so that's fair enough. Um, we'll just add some struts down here. That goes nicely there. And then we'll get some launch clamps. Four of them. And I think I think that's that's it there. We don't need. Um, you may wonder why I'm not putting like aerodynamic stuff on the things. At the, at the moment, the aerodynamic, the well, drag is still not very well programmed. So at the moment, it actually makes no difference. And in fact, is worse if you put aerodynamic nose codes on your rocket because it just slows them down because it's more weight. But anyway, our station is pretty much done there, and I'll I'll just call it Skylab. I think because uh, that's kind of the thing I was going for. I mean, there's a few bits missing. It had a, a couple of... It had some proper solar panels. In fact, we'll call it Skylab 1 in case we decide to change... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, not, my voice is still... That's... <coughs> that's probably... Okay, there we go. As I was saying... What was I saying? I don't know. Let's check. We don't have any crew in this. We do not have any crew in this. Oh, there's Ferbert and Dudski. Alive! Awesome. After I manage to return them home without killing them like I usually do. So we will put these engines down on here. And the launch clamps, everything fires at the same time. And then first off these boosters come off. And then these outer engines and then the middle one. And the middle, actually... Well, there's, actually, what we're going to do is we are going to put docking ports onto this stage, because this stage is going to be dumped in space. 
and so we want to be able to retrieve it and take it home. I should really try and put them in the centre of mass, but I would have to find out where the, where the centre of mass is on this thing alone and when it's empty of fuel, or nearly empty, depending. So, there we go, that's Skylab 1 there. We will save the design. And now we shall take it to the launch pad. Okay, here we go. It's night time, a night launch with this nice light from the from the water tower we've got there. Nothing's exploded. Excellent. That's always a good start. And because it's night time, we have no so we have no power coming in from the from the solar panels, but that should be fine. So, we will engage SAS. Throttle up. And fire. Beautiful. With all our lovely new parts. Making nice progress up. We want to be going at 110 meters per second at one kilometer up. And it looks like we're pretty set to do that. We're up to 100 meters per second. And 110. Okay, 100 or so meters late there, but that's fine. That can be expected on the first thing because you have to start you get in a kilometer you have to go from not moving at all to moving quite fast now we are exceeding our speed target a little bit because we want to be going at 130 meters at three kilometers which is the most efficient way there and so we need to just slow down the thrust a little bit okay we're up to 3,000 and 130 there we go and then at 5,000 we want to be at 160 so we will just keep things as they are now and we will start accelerating as we lose as weight drops um, we're going a little accelerating a little fast there again we're up to 150 actually we're, we were going at a good speed there five kilometers and 160 excellent we've still got a bit of the solid fuel left when we drop it we might be a little we might have a little more trouble going I'm not sure Solid fuel is almost out now. We're up to 210 meters per second. I don't. I can't remember the the, the target speeds after the five kilometer mark. But at that point, it gets. Oh, there goes the the boosters. So let's increase thrust to the main engines. I see we're motoring along quite well here. I think I, I my judgment was good. We can't see a thing, unfortunately. Oh wait, let's switch the lights on. Okay, well, it should illuminate anything in front of us, but at the moment there isn't anything, so you can just kind of see it's illuminating bits of the craft. Like the RCS things. Okay, let's have a look at the map view, bring up the information. Okay, we want to begin our gravity turn, go to 45 degrees, so there may be a little bit more because we are going up quite fast at this point. Right, let's go straight onto 90 degrees. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. So at the moment the apoapsis is below the atmosphere, but as it starts uh, as our orbit stretches out, the apoapsis will increase um hopefully up to um 75, which is my target. Oh, we've just lost a lot of thrust there. I believe our outer stage is gone, so we will drop that. And we've got all the fuel left on this stage, which should hopefully be enough to get us up. That actually ran out, that ran out quicker than I expected, I think, maybe? Or maybe we're just making a lot of progress. We are actually quite high up already. We're at 47 kilometers and rising fast. And the apoapsis is slowly moving away and up. Let's go. We're coming up off the horizon a bit. Let's go down again. G-force is currently just over 2. And as you saw, our apoapsis got up to 70, so in a second we want to cut the engines. We will do it now. Okay, and now we will warp around. It's funny, I was going to talk to you about sp space stations at this point, but we, this was a really quick launch, so there wasn't that much to, time to discuss. Well, I suppose I'll tell you about it in a minute. The episode is getting up to length at this point. Well, we'll swing around. I'll start talking to you about it. So... Um, the station that we're launching here is like the the first era it's from the first era of space stations essentially because it has only one docking port on the front um, these were called monolithic space stations and they so they were the first kind originally 
when space stations were built, people didn't really think about modular designs like we were used to now. They, oops, gone past the apoapsis. This is what happens when I start talking about things. Originally, they did. People. Designers didn't think about making multiple module spacecraft. The idea of a space station was just something that stayed in space and you would visit it occasionally, switch everything on and live there for a while. And so there were a few stations of this kind, both the Americans... Oh, we're, we're up, we're in, we're in orbit. But we'll, we'll go round to the day side anyway. So the Americans and the Russians both um, came, up, um, both built some monolithic space stations, though the Russians were very much ahead in, when it comes to space stations. They launched... Um, the, well, they had a whole series of them. They were called the Salyut space stations, and uh, or some similar pronunciation to that. And they, th um, to start with, they were all monolithic. And eventually, um, once modular space stations started to look like a, a thing, they switched to a kind of a, a transition phase between single, uh, between monolithic and modular. So. They, well, they started off with the one docking port, so you would dock a single ship to this docking port. The people would go in, they would live there for a while, they would get, get out, and they would come back. Also, an interesting thing about the Russian space stations was that they considered them to be extremely short-term installations. Some of them were around for, like, there was one around for less than two years that I think was manned, and there were things, like, I think the one that was in space longest was um, the final one, Salyut 7, which had two docking ports, and that was... Um, in orbit for 10 years, um, but it was only ma it was unmanned for the last, I think, five years of its existence or something along those lines. Whereas when um, the Americans did space stations, they only did Skylab. That was the only monolithic space station that they did, and it stayed up for a very long time. Um, and it was unmanned for a very long time as well. They, were, they meant to reboost it and keep using it, but, they, um, but the re-entry time ended up being between... Um, the retirement of, of Apollo missions and the beginning of shuttle missions, so they didn't have time to go up and, and reboot the station, so it fell back. Otherwise, it would it would have been up for like multiple decades, unlike the Russian ones. Anyway, uh, so basically, what have the way it works is they started with single docking ports and then they moved on to double docking ports, and the way that worked was you could dock to it and live in there. But then you could also dock a second craft, which meant that you could have continuous living. Before then, it was sort of impossible because you... Well, it, w it was possible, but it would mean that there would be times when the crew would be in the station with no means of escape, in case anything went wrong. With having two docking ports, you could dock a second ship on, get that crew in, take the crew from the origi original one out, and send them home. Or you could dock um, resupply ships, just to, to keep resupplying the people inside the station. And then eventually we moved on to modular stations where you can just fit millions of modules and have a ton of different things docked at any time, which is awesome. But anyway, we have our station up. It's got, a, it's got its scientific equipment, but right now it has no Kerbals. And of course, we're going to fix that in the next episode. We will bring up some Kerbals and um, get them on board and they can start doing science. Um, and until then, um, well, that, that will be in the next episode. Until then, I shall say goodbye. Thank you for watching. And I shall see you next time.